This is Skyler, and welcome to Java Programming Lesson 5. Today we do something completely different. In all the previous lessons, I've talked into this microphone and you listen to me drone on. Today, instead, I'm going to present a problem. You're going to pause this video, and then you're going to program the solution to it. I've included hints and the solution to the problem at the end of this video, but you shouldn't look at them until you've at least tried on your own. The problem you are to solve is calculating the area of three simple shapes, a square, a triangle, and a circle. You will read in the dimensions of the shapes using keyboard input, crunch the numbers, and then output the areas at the end of the program. I have here a solution to the problem that I wrote earlier. So when I run this project, it pops up a quick welcome screen, and then asks me to put in one side of the square, so I'll do 2.5. Then the base of the triangle, I'll say is 5, the height, 10, then the radius of the circle. So these are the, the dimensions that you need to read in of the shapes. And then once you've put all the numbers in, it outputs the area for the three shapes. Yours doesn't need to look exactly like this, but it needs to take in the numbers and then print out the areas at the end. And that's it. At this time, pause the video and then do your best to write your solution to this problem. If you need hints, come back to this screen and click on the links to the hints. Once you're done, click on the solution and it will take you to the end of the video where I show you my solution to the problem. For your first hint, I'm going to show you how I wrote my prompts and then got user input. In the previous lessons, when we wanted to get user input, we had just had the user type in on the blank line in the bottom of NetBeans. We never had to put up a prompt such as, type in your value here. How you do this is you put a system.out.println first, and then on the next line you use your scanner object from part 4 to read in the user's input. Something else we haven't done before is read in multiple numbers from the user. In this lesson I'm asking you to read four different numbers in from the user. Luckily to do this all you have to do is call the next line or next int or next double function from your scanner more than once and it will work out for you. Take a look at the source code I provided on this screen and then go back to your project and keep trying. We went over simple math in an earlier lesson, but we never really used it to solve for anything, like area. So if you're feeling stuck, then take a look at the equations I provided on this screen. The top equation is what I used to solve for the area of the triangle, and the bottom one for the circle. Feel free to take a look at it, but then get back to your project and keep trying. If you're looking at this hint, you might be confused about the overall structure of the program. So here is a guideline to get you started off on the right foot. The first thing we need to do is create some empty variables that we'll store our numbers in. Then we'll read in values from the user using the scanner object from lesson 4. Then, using those same variables from the beginning, we'll need to crunch some numbers using variable arithmetic from lesson 3 to solve for the area. Then, at the end of the project, we're going to print out these variables using the system.out.println function. Welcome to the end of this tutorial. I hope the coding went well for you. If you ran into any really large bugs or couldn't quite grasp anything about this tutorial, please let me know in the comments of this video. Your feedback is really appreciated, and I'd like to know what to do differently next time. But let's take a look at my solution, shall we? Starting here at the main entry point of my program, so you can see the first thing I do is I print out a welcome to the user. I'm comforted when computer programs welcome me, so I'll do that to other people. Not necessary, just nice. The next line, though, is very necessary. You create the scanner, just like we did in Lesson 4. And then we'll use the scanner for throughout the rest of the program. The rest of the program is organized into three main parts. You see here's the square section, the triangle section, and then the circle section. So the square section, first thing I do is I print out an empty line. It's a print line function with nothing inside of it. What that does is, in the output, it prints a new line. Basically puts some white space, makes it look prettier. Again, aesthetics, 
preference. Not necessary, but that's the way I do it. The next line I print out is the prompt, asking the user to please en enter the size of one side of the square. Then directly after that, I use the scanner to get the next double from the, the keyboard input, and then I store it into a variable called square height. Then I use the square height variable to calculate the square area. And I follow this pattern again for triangles. You can see this time I get the base and then the height. And the equation is slightly different. It's one half base times the height for a triangle. And then the circle, the same thing. For pi here, for the circle equation, there are two ways you could do this. You could use math.pi. Yes, Java has everything in it already, even pi. But I don't expect you to know that. So 3.1415, or even just 3.14, will work just fine. Then the last thing I do is I print out the results. I start with a nice blank line so it's easy to read. And then I just print out the area of the square, the triangle, and then the circle. And the final line of my code is closing the scanner. That's very important. But there you have it. Feel free to look over my code, see how you did things differently, or where you might have got hung up. But this concludes Java Programming Lesson 5. I hope that you feel like you've learned something so far. In our next lessons, we're going to continue on with some more advanced topics, and pretty soon, I'm going to make some tutorials on writing video games in Java, which is my personal favorite. So thank you for following along so far, and I'll see you in the next lesson.